Hi everybody. I am making a second video today and this one is going to be kind of long so I'm just bear with me using my phone uh, to film this one because my DSLR um, is kind of old school and it only films about 10 minutes at a time so um, but I wanted to go over a few things about the last days and the end times um, the beginning of sorrows the birth pains and I have notes and I have a bunch of scriptures that I want to read um, because I have people asking me why I think that we are um, in the last days and not only as a Christian do I see all these things happening and I know from scripture why but there's also non-believers that are noticing that things are happening around the world and they don't know why because they don't believe in the scriptures. So let's just go ahead and get started right off the bat in Genesis uh, 1.14. And it says, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. So right off the bat in Genesis, uh, God tells us that um, the moon and the sun, um, or one of the one of the purposes of the moon and the sun, is for signs. So let's just go ahead and get right into some of the signs uh, that we've been seeing. We of course. Um, a couple of years ago, we had um, the total solar eclipse that crossed over the United States. And then we had historical record-breaking hurricanes that caused significant uh, devastation. Um, and those hurricanes have continued, although they've slowed down here. We've had typhoons, which are is a hurricane. They just call it a typhoon. Um, you know, over on the Japan and Indonesian side. And we have had uh, tsunamis, recently a tsunami um, that uh, came in without warning and um, caused devastation. So Jesus tells us that one of the things that we're to look for in the end of the age is going to be the the roaring of the waters and um, I truly believe that that is happening and I believe that the solar eclipses and the lunar eclipses or what some of us refer to as blood moons um, are signs um, and God is using them and I believe that significant things happen whether good or bad um, whenever these things occur I really feel like whenever there's the total solar eclipses that it's not really a good thing, um, that that's a sign, um, maybe a warning of things to come. As believers, of course, we're not to be afraid because we need to look up and know that our redemption is near. Um, so I am probably not quite so organized on this just because this video is going to be kind of lengthy. Um, and usually I'm making much shorter videos and on a much shorter subject, but uh, let me go ahead and let me just go over some of the notes that I wrote. Um, first of all, Israel became a nation in 1948. And I know a lot of people say that it's significant that Jerusalem was declared the capital um, by Donald Trump uh, after they became a nation for 70 years on their 70 year anniversary. But kind of the way I see it, which I mean, maybe it is a sign, I'm not really sure, but I kind of see it as the Lord declared Jerusalem as the capital. Um, so, but I, I do believe 70 years has a significance um, in this because 70 is a, is a significant number in the Bible. Um, there, we, I talked about the uh, the eclipse that, that came over the U.S. There's also another one coming, a total eclipse that's going to cross the path of the other one. Um, and that one's coming in 2024. Um, and so 
that's something to definitely uh, keep an eye out for. Uh, also this month, this month we have a blood moon, a super moon, blood moon, the wolf part, I don't even know why they throw that in there. That's basically just what they call a January full um, moon. So anyways, but it's a super moon, blood moon, and that's going to be occurring on the 20th and 21st of this month. And I really feel like, because it is going to be visible in the U.S., that we probably, I feel like we need to watch um, not only the U.S., but also Israel. Because I feel like that the um, total lunar eclipses, the blood moons, are definitely a sign for Israel. Something going on there. Um, we have had waves um, like giant huge waves in California and various islands and stuff around the world um, where they're warning people to stay off the beaches because it's so bad uh, we have had record-breaking fires um, I mean look at California look at California and now Hawaii um, which I'm sorry I, I actually didn't even go in to check the latest status on Hawaii, so uh, you'll have to do that, and you'll have to forgive me. I'm sorry. Um, earthquakes. Okay. I know I made a video about earthquakes in Alaska, and I'm, I honestly don't even know the actual total between the earthquakes and all the aftershocks, but I want to say it was somewhere upwards of, I don't know, close to 7,000, and that was just Alaska. So... I wanted to make a list of earthquakes, but there's so many of them that I would have been sitting here and reading that list off for the next 15 minutes. They are everywhere, happening all over the place. Um, it's pretty intense. So if you want to know where, you just go ahead and, you know, Google. <laughs> Google the earthquake map and um, for the year or for last year and this year or the last few years because um, I think things have been ramping up here over the probably the last um, what I mean what I've noticed over maybe like the last five to seven years so depending on how far you want to go back but um, yeah things are things are definitely happening at a rapid a much more intense uh, pace than they have in the past and that would be indicative of referring to you know birth pains where a woman is in labor and the contractions come and they're mild and they're far apart and they just get harder and harder and um, there's more pain there they come in um, more frequency there's less time between them so that's pretty much what we're seeing in these uh, patterns in these days that we're in so, um, let's see, there's also waters, uh, waters turning to blood, and I, I'm not going to say that that's actually a specific prophecy in the Bible, but it could be a foreshadowing of specific prophecies to come, um, but there have been multiple places around the world where the waters have turned, you know, blood red and become toxic, and um, so I do believe that that is at least a, a foreshadowing. Now, volcanoes. <laughs> we have 40 erupting right now. And we have 1,500 that are active. So, in my opinion, that's, that's a lot. Uh, that is a lot. We have so many mass animal deaths over the last couple of years that here again, if I were to sit and read them, we would be sitting here for the next 15 minutes while I just read off a list of them to you. Now, a lot of them do have to do with fish and have to do with birds, but not all of them. There are others, like cows and things like that, that are um, not usual, not, not typical. Um, and they are happening um, more frequently and in more places. So um, that's another thing if you're interested in looking that up you know go ahead and do that um, but let's go ahead and with all that being said let's go ahead and get into some of the scriptures now we've already read Genesis 1 14 
And I want to go ahead and flip over now uh, to, whoops, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, bear with me. You're just looking at like the top of my head. Um, let's see. I want to go ahead and jump over to um, Isaiah 25, 7 and 8. And he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. That is so beautiful. Let's go ahead and go on to nine. And it will be said in that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. I absolutely love that. Now, another one that I have uh, written down here. Let me mark through. I sort of have scribblings all over my paperwork here. Uh, this is going to be... Um, I'm going to save Matthew 24 for last because I'm going to read the entire chapter. So right now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move on to 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 13 through 18. Oh, if I can get to it. I thought I had everything bookmarked, but maybe I don't. Oh, I do. Okay. All right. This is 4, 13. Uh, through 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And by the way, Yeshua is Jesus. Yeshua is his name in Hebrew, and Jesus is the translation um, through the Greek and the Latin into um, English, which I'm not sure why it's not Joshua, but it's Jesus, but that is our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. Um, okay. For if we believe that Jesus died, uh, that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Uh, this is one of the scriptures where we get uh, what we call the rapture from because I always have people coming to me and saying the rapture is not in the Bible, that word rapture is not in there, there's no such thing. Um, we're going to be caught up in the air, those of us that are still alive, uh, whenever Jesus returns. We're going to be caught up in the air with him. And this is the scripture. And no, the word rapture isn't in the Bible. No, in a future translation, it may end up getting put in there. Because what it is, is it's a descriptive word of being caught up. Um, so that is uh, where that comes from. Now, let's go ahead and flip over to 2 Thessalonians, and the two, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness already at work, only he, talking about God, who now restrains, will do so until he is taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power signs and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. 
because they do not receive the love of the truth and they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So um, the son of perdition is going to be revealed and those that are um, non-believers, the ones that are perishing, they're going to believe that he is God. He's going to claim to be God. Sorry about that. Uh, my camera stopped. So he is going to... Um, He's going to sit, um, as far as I know, he's going to sit in the third temple that's going to be built, um, and he's going to claim to be God. And those that are perishing, the, the ones that don't believe in Jesus, they're going to believe that he is who he says he is, and he is going to show signs and wonders, lying. God says lying, signs and wonders. So um, those that are perishing are actually going to believe the lie and then those will be the ones that are going to be taking the mark of the beast okay so now that we have gotten through that and i um i'm going to go ahead and go over to revelation 1 7. now there's a ton more scriptures i'm just going over some of them so um i trust that you will do your own research and get into the word of god and pray for his um, discernment and revelation and so you can divide his word rightly uh, because that is very important and i'm not going to say that we always get it right but i mean i want to get it right so and i pray that um, god reveals the truth um to you all as well so this was i'm sorry revelation one i went a little too far revelation one seven behold he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. So I just wanted to throw that little scripture in there because it's just beautiful. Every eye is going to see. Every knee is going to bow. Um, you know, I mean, Jesus is going to come in great glory. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump over to Matthew because that will be in Matthew 24. And I went a little too far. No, that's Isaiah. I'm sorry. Whoops, where am I at? <laughs> okay, here we go. Matthew 24. Hopefully, I have plenty of space on here because this chapter is a little bit lengthy, but I want to read the whole thing. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And that doesn't mean saying he is, they're going to claim that they are. And they're going to deceive many, which we've already seen that happening um, in various places around the world. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to the tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads this, uh, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. People, it is going to be bad. I mean, it is going to be like nothing we've ever seen before. And 
we've seen some pretty bad stuff. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. That's how bad it's going to be. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Hallelujah. Thank God. Then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For, whoever the car for wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. And he is talking about the generation that sees these things, um, not that generation uh, 2,000 years ago. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then the two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. The two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, um, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that um, evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him at that hour, and he is not aware of, and will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay. Brothers and sisters, we have got to be watching. We have got to be expecting Jesus to come at any moment, and we need to be about our Father's business.